record. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Real Talk Tuesdays. And today's topic is going to be on the weapon inside of you. Yes, we all have a weapon and it's inside of us. It's a weapon where we can take it out, those who know who have it. And those who don't know they have it, they still have it, but they just got to work on it. They got to evolve their talent on how to use that weapon. Remember, a weapon is not always using bad. A weapon is also using good. Because, um, what is a weapon? Let's start like that. What is a weapon? Anybody want to text us live? Tell us what is a weapon and want to chat with us. Write down the number. 646-248-2589. One more time. 646-248-2589. Or you can chat with us live. What says chat or social stream? What is a weapon? Basically, okay. A weapon is, um... It's something that use some something that has power, amen. Something that has power that used in defense of something, right? Something that has power that used in defense of something. Something that you can pull out at any moment, at any time, that will be in uh, on your behalf to defend you of whatever danger of whatever's happening around you. Is that clear? That's what a weapon is. Now everybody got a weapon inside of themselves. If you know what the weapon is, text it. Let us know what you think that weapon is. God put weapons in, in all of us, basically. To what? God put a weapon so we could fight against the enemy. Who's the enemy? The accuser. The lie. The 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 the, 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 the deception. The the, the the prince of lies. The, the master of lies. I mean, that's the devil. That's that's that we fight for all the time, because he tries to take us away from God. He he tries to distract us from us seeing God, from God speaking to us. And it's like God's trying to speak to us, but then he puts something in front of us. That's called sin. He makes us fall into sin. He knows that sin is the only thing that keeps us away away from God and from us listening to God's that's voice. Great. Amen. But um, that's the topic. Amen. So hold that pause for one second. We're gonna about to pray so we can start. Amen. And one is gonna be brave and pray today so we can start. Amen. Go ahead, lovely prophet. He's pray so God can bring down the fire so God can touch them. Amen. Again. God could use anybody, guys, even a rock. Amen. So, so don't 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 leave by loop. Amen. <laughs> Father God, we come before you. We give yes, you Lord, glory, you. honor, my God. We know you're an able God. And thank God, you, God, and you are an almighty God, and nothing is impossible. Open in our favor, in Father God, Jesus. and we pray that anyone that lies in now, my God, in is touched by your mighty power, Father God. Lead us, Holy Spirit. We welcome into this place now. Yes, we lead Lord. us to a life. Guide us. Give us words of knowledge, words of wisdom, That's words right. of yes. guidance, Father God. Yes, and Lord. we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we In pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. The weapon inside you. So what the weapon is that you have? Amen. For example, um, um, do you know that your tongue is a weapon? And yes, it is inside you. Your tongue is a weapon. You know that because in the in the book in the Bible it says that you can use the your, your your tongue to either bless or to curse. It's a weapon. See, it's good and bad. You can bless and you can curse. Now, what you use it for is your choice. You know what I mean? I hope you're not using it for bad. Why is the tongue? Is is the most biggest? It's the smallest weapon, but the most powerful weapon. And man, I always said that we could we could tame elephants. We humans can tame lions. We could tame crocodiles. Amen. But we can never tame the smallest thing that is a muscle, which is our tongue. We can never tame it. We can never conquer it. We can never control it completely. Why is that? If we could tame the biggest animals, the strongest, the fastest, the most, uh, I guess, ferocious, but yeah, we cannot control something small as our tongue. Well, it's something that is very powerful in a way that you can curse people, right? If I talk bad about you, that's, that's cursed. I'm, I'm cursing you. I mean, if I if I gossip, that's I'm using it for bad. For example, if I if if I scream names at you or curse at you, that's cursing. That's desiring desiring bad on somebody else, and that's bad. You know, God gave us a tongue so we can bless, even though He gave us the free will so you could do whatever you like. But then you have to face the consequences with the King. After that, you know what I'm saying. But I I choose to use my tongue for blessing. Even though I am a sinner, sometimes it comes out and it curses people, but I try my best to be, you know, to, to, to be righteous before God. Not to curse nobody, not to talk bad about nobody. Like the commandment thing number eight says, don't um don't bear false witness on somebody else. I mean, don't say nothing bad about somebody else. Don't talk bad behind somebody else. Something that's actually false, that's not true, something made up. See what I'm saying? That's bad, guys. So that's that's a weapon that I think is very strong, the tongue. 
Right, because you you could be a nice miss or a nice person. Then when you the train, somebody steps on you, you come out with the craziest curses. You come out with a crazy face, and you come out your mouth right away. And you use your tongue to pronounce those words. Amen. I don't know if you've been happy sometime or on the train or wherever. That I don't know where you just flip and start, you know, you, you just switch on somebody like a light switch. Boom, you start cursing people. You get mad rapidly. That's bad, guys. You know, the Bible says, you know, be... If you wise, you be slow to be angry. Be slow to get angry. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't. It's okay to get angry, but don't sin. Be slow. The Bible also says that those who are slow to be angry are mightier than a city. That means if you're quick to be angry, you know you can't control nothing because you can't even control yourself. So how can you control a city? How can you say you're a boss when you can't even control your own tongue? See what I'm saying? So the, the tongue is very, very dangerous. That's a big weapon. That's a weapon inside you that you can use any second, every flip of a switch. But guess what I'm doing? For example, I'm, I'm, I'm using it to preach the word of God. I'm using it for good. I'm using it to give life to you and to others who listen to the word of God. Amen. And I use it to give life to myself because I repeat these Bible verses so I can believe them and live Amen. them. Amen. That's why the Bible says uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God twice. I hear it. But then I repeat it to myself twice, amen. And obviously, I obviously I live it. But be careful with your tongue. Be careful who you talk bad about. Be careful, cause the Bible also says that God knows man's heart. He knows your heart. He knows what you're thinking right now. Yes, mm -hmm. He knows your evil thoughts. He knows what you think about at night. He knows those evil plans that you have to do against those people. He knows your heart. Mm -hmm. He also knows the good things that you plan to do for your mother. He also knows the good things that you plan to do for your school, for your church. He knows that you're good at heart. He knows that He knows that you're really trying. He knows that too. He knows everything, so we gotta be careful. You know, by ju by ju by us just conceiving a thought, we're sinning. Do you know that? For example, just like Jesus said, um, if you search, if you saw what, just look at a, a woman with lust, you have already committed adultery in your heart. So all you have to do is look and think and meditate. You already have committed lust. You committed adultery in the heart. You don't have to see the woman, you know, and then have actual intercourse. But once by you thinking that you're having sexual intercourse it's with nice. her. It's done. You already sinned. Amen. So you got to be careful about that. But I'm not sinning because I'm not sleeping. No, yes, you are. You're committing ad adultery at heart. It's in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? That's why we men got to watch out when we look at girls. You know, you can let somebody pass by. But when you start looking and meditating and start thinking those nasty thoughts, then that's sinning. Girls too. Girls look at guys sometimes and I know the first thing they be looking at. You got to be careful with that, guys. That's, that's committing lust. And the Bible says that no adulterer will ever enter the or inherit the kingdom of God you know so we got to cut that amen you definitely got to cut that you know um what's the weapon inside of you um for example uh, uh a talent talents I think a weapon sometimes in what sense for example um I have a talent to sing for example you know as I look over here if you have a talent that God gave you to sing amen but yeah you use it to what to worship the devil to sing to the devil for example to sing to something that's otherwise that's not God you're using a weapon that God gave you for, for bad. Do you know that? Because you're not using it for what it was created for. We were all created for to worship God. Amen. It's in the book. God made us to worship Him and only Him. But when we sing to somebody, for example, it depends what kind of song you're singing. When we use those songs and that talent, that beautiful voice that you got, that, that, those cool um, rhymes of rap that God gave you, you know, those cool spoken word that God gave you. We talk about drugs, we talk about uh, putting down women, we talk about, you know, stupidity. Then you're using it to curse people. You're using it to, to for bad, and that's a weapon. And man, because people are going to listen to you because you have a good voice in this and the third, but yeah, you're using it for bad. For example, those new songs that hip hop, the, the one that talks about Mali a lot, like, yo, like something he says that Mali's a drug, it's cocaine, it's heroin. And he talks about I pop Mali, and then all the kids in high school are singing the song, like I pop, Ma I pop Mali. Remember, What's in your heart is gonna come out of your mouth, and that's what you're gonna do. It's already in their mind, so they keep repeating it. I pop Molly. They're soon gonna go to a party. They're gonna have Molly. Oh, let me try that. The song says that I could do it, so let me do it. So that person that made up the song is using his rap lyrics for bad. You see what I'm saying? That's a weapon inside of him. But imagine that person using that weapon to bless youth, to give life to youth instead of putting them down, to say, don't smoke, don't drink, to say, don't kill others, don't hate others, don't gossip. Mm -hmm. But yeah, what we have is people smoke all you want, all the marijuana. For example, Wiz Khalifa always writes about smoking weed and Little Wayne and getting high in the class, for example. That's what they talk about. They talk about that and sex all the time repeatedly. Weed and sex, weed and sex, weed and sex. Don't you get tired of hearing the same thing? 
See, they're using their talents to curse people because then, you know, we listen to it, then we tend to do it, then we tend to live it because we see them living it and that's how we want to be with the cars and the change and the girls and the money and the everything. We want to be like that. So slowly we, we tend to, not all of us, some of us tend to mold into that. And that's why youth is failing nowadays because we see things that we want to do. Now I know what it takes to get there, amen? Oh, um, Ambar, thank you for watching. God bless you. Amber is watching all the way from the Bronx. Uh, God bless you, sister. Amen, amen. I know you're going to be doing this soon, but um, thank you for those who just locked down, those who are watching. This is Real Talk Tuesday, where we talk for real. And today's topic is the weapon inside of you, amen. So I just finished discussing about the weapon, the weapon inside of you, about a talent that you have. For example, any other talents that you, you think that people use as a weapon, for example, um, 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 I think you see you see some comedians. Some comedians are funny, right? They're really funny, right? They they, they use a weapon. I'm not saying they're using it for bad, cause they they do comedy. They make people laugh. It's, that's actually something good. But they're funny. They they quick to speak. They quick to make a joke to make somebody laugh. They quick to bring somebody's energy up. Hey man, what if I use in a bigger intensity to get up in, in national TV and, and preach? The word I got through comedy. You see what I'm saying? You can't preach the word I got through comedy. You make people laugh. Amen. And, and and bring joy to people. Amen. What if they use that for that instead of crushing up a storm or something like that? You know what I mean? And um Um and those weapons can you be used for bad. The weapon inside of you. Can you please text us? If you know the weapon inside of you, if God gave you a talent or anything that you have that you know you could use it for good and bad, but you yet choose to do it for good. Or do you have a, a weapon inside of you that sometime at some point in life you used it for bad for bad or something? Speak to us. Please, Texas Life. Amber, I know you're watching, so Texas. Texas Amber, Amber's watching? Well, Amber's watching. You know, hey man, I know Cindy's watching, everybody else. Texas, what is the weapon inside of you? A weapon that you have, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to read the Bible verse real quick. Hey Amen. Before you, before you, Texas. I'm reading from the book of Matthews. And I'm talking about the, the arrest of Jesus. When the Pharisees came to arrest Jesus. Hey Amen. Let me just get a little sip of juice. Sorry, I right, see. Amen. The book of Matthews, chapter um, chapter 26, verse 50 and up. Actually, verse 51 and up. One of those men with, with Jesus drew... The point is, I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain to you before I read it. It was Jesus. He was with his three disciples. And when they came to arrest him, um, they came with, to, to Jesus with bad sticks and stones and weapons, like swords, literally. So Jesus is, is unarmed. He has no weapons. So he, so Jesus tells him, "Am I like a thief or a robber or a killer for you for you to come to me at weapons and arrest me? You know, it's it's like a it's an offense if you think about it. If you know you did something, you deserve to be arrested or something. Well, Jesus didn't deserve to be, deserve to be arrested. But the point is that if somebody comes at you like the police with guns and weapons to arrest you, like yo, but I'm not a thief. I'm not a killer. Why should you come at me with weapons? That's the same thing that happened to Jesus in this situation." So the point is that a Peter, it was a Peter, it was Peter, right? Peter took out, when they was about to arrest Jesus, Peter took out a sword, a sword and he cut one of the, the Pharisee slave's ear off. Boom, like that, real quick. But thank God, Jesus is the healer. He took his ear back and put it back in place and he was healed, amen? But the point is, this is what Jesus said. This will interest me. Jesus says, all those who take the sword will, buy, will die by the sword. Amen. You ever heard the term, live by the gun, die by the gun? Well, it was in the Bible. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. You live by gossip, you're going to be buried with gossip and by gossip. You live by hating, you are going to be dead by hate. You see what I'm saying? Whatever you do, the Bible says that you will be judged in that same measure. For example, so it keeps saying in verse 26, Matthew 26, verse 53, it says, Don't you know that I could call on my Father for help? That's Jesus speaking. And at once, He will send me more than 12 armies of angels. But in that case, how could the scripture come true which say that this is what must happen? The point is that it's Jesus here, the Son of God, and people about to arrest him. And they come with him with weapons and guns, for example, whatever. And Jesus says, don't you know that I could call my father, appeal, appeal to my father, and he'll send me 12 armies of angels? You know what a legion is? A legion is 2,000, is an army of 2,000. That's 12. For example, that's 12 times 2. That's 24,000 angels. Could have come in a second, in a split of a second, to help Jesus. Tell me that's not a big weapon. Amen. In a second, that weapon could be pulled down. Angels could come and rescue Jesus, take him back to heaven, or, or kill those people, whatever. 
But that's a weapon that Jesus knew he had, but he didn't use it. And that's why I want to evoke my example today. Jesus had a weapon to kill anybody he wanted, but he didn't. He came actually to forgive and, and be peaceful to people and give peace to their hearts and mind. Amen. And um, Jesus could have used that weapon, but he didn't use it. Now, is there a weapon that you have that God gave you that you could use, but you don't use it? Or that you use it for good? Please text us at 646-248. 2589 let me know speak to me what do you think about the message let me know what's your opinion what's a weapon to you no let me know speak to me please i need to chat with you you have any sense about a weapon have you had any weapons wanda to to you i give one the conversation to speak about one is a prophet prophets ha have a weapon what weapon is that they have the weapon of prophecy they are people's mess they're god's messenger amen so whatever they declare it shall come to pass amen so if they declare something that's bad on you it will happen to you it will happen to you because that's what prophets do they declare the word and god backs them up now god doesn't give the, the power of prophecy the prophetic ministry to anybody because you know who he gives it to because she could use that against somebody else but she doesn't she uses to prophesy good to people and it still comes to pass for example in elijah in the book of first kings he was in a mountain, and, and the king sent army armies to arrest him. But, but he sent three, 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 three armies of fifty each. So the first fifty men came up to him. They wanted to arrest him, but he said, "Father God, let the fire come down from heaven and kill all of them." He killed fifty men. Now the the king says, "You know what? I gotta send more men." He sent another fifty men. The same thing. Father God, let they let the ring fire to them, and they killed them again. Amen. There are another fifty men. And those 50 men realized the weapon that he had, so they said, no, we come in peace. Please come with us. And then he went with them because God told them to. The point is that man, that man is a prophet. He could have called fire down from heaven. Imagine right now, say, oh, to your enemies, let, the, let fire come down and burn them right now. Hmm. Like a meteor or something. That's a prophet. They have the power to do that. Amen. So, for example, one that's a prophet, she has the power to declare anything bad on anybody who, who desires her bad, but she doesn't do it. There's many people that talk bad about her or any or prophets, but... They use it to bless you instead of curse you. Because remember Jesus said, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Amen? You have anything to say about that, babe? About the prophetic? About when people talk bad about you and you have the power to talk bad about them as a woman of, and, and prophet of God. But yeah, you don't. Well, listen. God bless you guys. Have a good... Thank you for joining. Um... Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, the Lord puts us through process because... The devil tempts you. It's a whole different story, but the matter is that when you're, when when the Lord processes you, He's trying to mature you. So that weapon, it can be um either you actually grow in Christ through a process, or you go back. It's best to actually grow. Amen. Because God wants bigger things in your life. You will never be processed when you see people being persecuted highly, and, and people kind of question it, like, how come you go through so much? Well, that's use that weapon well. When you're being persecuted, the blessing is, is almost there. The devil knows it. But Amen. if you listen more to what they're saying and what they're doing, you're going to backslide. Amen. You don't That's want right. that. You don't want that. Um, I, Sorry, go ahead, babe. Go ahead. No, no. I was going to read something there. Cindy, I just got your message on Facebook. And this is Cindy. Cindy's 12 years old. She's a beautiful young lady in God. We just were her right now on the train. Um, She loves God very much. She goes to our church. And she wrote this. She told me what's her weapon. She said, my talent is playing the piano. I don't know that. I don't, that amen. I, I listen, this and I use, I use it for good because I can praise the Lord by music. Since the Lord knows our hearts, He knows what I use my talent for. I express my words by playing for Him. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So she's a little girl. She, she plays the piano for God. That's her weapon to, to, to against the enemy because when you praise God, you know, you're saying no to the enemy. Amen. And she knows she got a talent, so she uses it to praise God. Amen. Amber um, stated that her weapon um, in Perla worshiping through dancing for the Lord. Hers is, I guess, worshiping through dancing to the Lord. And Perla um, said that the weapon is singing and prophecy. Oh, amen. Look at that. So she she dances. Amen. She dances for the Lord. And amen. when you dance for God, you actually break chains. It's, not, it's another level when you dance. Dance ministry, it, it's, it, you break chains. When you dance for the Lord, it's like, it's like declaring war. Amen. That's what it is. You know, you might not understand right now. I have to give another preaching about that. But those who are Christians and go to church, that's why you see people dancing while they're singing and praising God. And that's a weapon against the enemy because the enemy does not like when we praise God. He Amen. Doesn't. 
But God yes. loves them when we praise them. Yeah, amen. Um, when you praise them, I, I say like this because I said he was reading Psalms 126 at theology school. And, and, and I rejoiced when they said, you know, and we shouted out to the Lord and we rejoiced. But the truth of the matter is that they were sowing the last seed. They were going through the biggest, big, biggest, enormous famine at the moment. But they were sowing by faith the last feet, seed. My question to you tonight is, what are you sowing to God on your worst times? Because, you know, we quit because when people see us in church, they think our life is all set. People actually, actually, you know, people that think because they don't really know because, you know, like I always tell people, you might go to church, you might know about Jesus, but you don't really know Jesus. Amen. You might know about Obama, but you don't really know Obama. Amen. You know what I mean? So knowing about me does not make you close to me. Amen. You might know, and you might hear a lot of things about us, but you don't really know us. So since you might know rumors, you might hear rumors, but you don't know facts. Amen. Same thing with the Lord. They don't know the truth, because truth always supersedes facts. Facts is facts. Amen. But the truth is Amen. way more than the God facts. God gives us different weapons, and we're supposed to use them at a moment. Like, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a prophet. I, um, I mean, God speaks to me very clear. The Holy Spirit speaks to me very clear. Honestly, you know, I don't know how it's done, but God, it's a gift. It, it runs naturally. I have a gift of administration. Amen. I could organize an event in less than three weeks. I could do a wedding in less than three weeks. Amen. It's a gift. Why is it a gift? Because I don't really have to pay someone. I don't have to go to school for it. It was. It, it just is. It's in you, yeah. No one told me how to be a prophet and prophesy. No one told me how to intercede. Right. No one told me how to, you know, what is it? Um, see someone and I could discern the spirits. I, I know. I mean, it's it was God given. It, it's something I didn't work for. It just happened. People, you know, I touch someone and I, I, I don't know. It's something. I, I just feel words coming out of my mouth and it's it's done. It's God. You know, Amen. Holy Spirit is, 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 is very life in me. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Amen. But the point is, it's not something learned. And that weapon, you use it either for best or for worse. Amen. My question to you tonight is, what are you using that weapon God given that Amen. God has given you for a great purpose in God? Are you using it to destroy others as a spirit of manipulation that you want to, you know, it's like you kind of want to put everything in order, but it's not your strength. Amen. Zechariah 4, 6 is by the spirit of the Lord in you. So let's be wise. Let me tell you, I'm, I've been put in situations that, like right now, that you know, I'm going through another another big process. But it's like, you know what? Like, honestly, either you let that thing take the joy away from your life, or you build it up for the kingdom of God to bring heaven on earth. Amen. Because the truth of matter is, guys, as the the more you see a person being used by God, the more persecution is coming upon their life. As happy as they may seem, as joyful as they may seem, as the many things that they might have. Amen. Don't judge a book by its cover. Amen. Being a being a woman of God and a man of God, it's a price to pay. Yes, Jesus paid the higher price. But in order for you to be used by God, you must remain in obedience. That's right. Which Amen. is not it is hardly seen these days. Because you we confront what we want to our pastors, to our spiritual leaders. Amen. But you know, the thing is that God honors those that are living a sanctified life Amen. before him in private. And in public, he should basically exhort you, you know, exhort Amen. you to be used in public. But if you're not living a sanctified life behind closed doors, Amen. That's right. Let me tell you, the Lord will put your life to shame. So watch out. If you're trying to minister the word of God, use that weapon. And that weapon, you're about to shoot yourself in a minute. Amen. Right. You know, we all got a talent. We all got a weapon, and 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 I believe that God gave you a talent for a reason, right? We in the church, we all have gifts. For example, when there's a prophecy, has to give a, pro a prophecy. I am an evangelist. For example, I have the gift of, cause God, you know, God told me through the prophet, I have the gift of healing. Some people have the gift of teaching. They're teachers. Some are pastors, right? They care for their sheep. God gave us all gifts. Some have the word of wisdom. Some, some have, you know, uh, the word of knowledge. But Amen. what are you using it for? God gave you a gift. And if you don't use it to help others, and, by the way, the gift is not for you. He gave it to you so others can, you can give it to others. Man, so one that benefits me and I benefit one. That's why we all got to go to church. That's why people be like, oh, but I believe in God. I don't got to go to church. You know, it's a commandment to go to church. The Lord said keep the Sabbath, keep one day holy. Amen. Do, and it's, in, it's one of the commandments in Deuteronomy. Amen. In Exodus, it's a commandment. Why? When we together, I use my gift and what, may, what I'm strong in and what she's weak in or he's weak in, I help them and vice versa. Because one day and I, you know, we're like perfect for each other. Amen. Praise God. If I lack in something, she's strong in that, and vice versa, but we help each other out. So how can you tell me that you, you don't want to go to church because you just believe in God, you know, because there's hypocrites, whatever, and you stay home? What about what you need? 
Nobody can supply you with their gift and you can't supply nobody. So you're basically being selfish and that's bad. God didn't make selfish people. He made for you to give to others. Remember the greatest commandment is to love others as you love yourself. And give to others. Amen. Care about others. Even for your enemies. Pray and love your enemies. Amen. So those who have talents and are using it for God. Those who know who have it and they're little shy to use it. You know, come on, man. You can do anything. Jesus who gives you strength. Amen. Philippians 4.13. Right, Sandy? Memorize that. Amen. So, um, you cannot tell me that you don't have a talent. Everybody has it. Now, you might not know at the moment, but what's the only way? Everyone has a gift, amen. The only way you can discover that gift is through God, because He's the one that gave it to you, amen. You gotta hear God's voice. And, and, and it's so deep that we know people with great talents, but guess what? They use it for the wrong beings. Amen. They use it. If you a leader, people will follow you. But where are you leading? Where are you leading those people to? Where are you leading those people to? Amen? I know people that are that are big time leaders, but they smoking weed all the time. So they lead in that crowd to smoking more weed Amen. and smoking and drinking more. I know people well, that gossiper. have great talents, yep. but they big time gossipers. Mm -hmm. So everyone they chill, it's the they're busy gossiping. They gather up in a room, if it's or in a house, in a in a living room, automatic. They don't even talk about themselves because it's easy. Let me tell you guys, it's about easier others. for me to talk about Lewis issues than speak about my own issues. Of course, because nobody wants to speak about their own issues. Nobody wants to say I have problems, even though they instead, put it. Instead of you saying, you know what, you know what, I, I need help in this. I know I'm having a an issue with my mouth. Time, yeah. God help me speak better. You know what, God, I don't really want to speak about such and such, but let me speak about me. You know what? Let me say what I'm going through. You know what? Let me let me trust my friends with what's really living. What am I living through? What's in my heart right now? Amen. Why I feel as so depressed as I do? You know what I want from life? Why I want to succeed? Wh you know why do I have this competition spirit in me? Why am I so jealous of my friends? Yeah. You know, why am I lacking? Why have I been trying to do the same thing for five years, but I'm still stuck in the same level? Mm -hmm. Why is God not hearing my prayers? Why do I want to grow with God and I seek him to the last, 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 mm -hmm. I mean to the tops, but he's not releasing that blessing that I want. Because you're basically looking at somebody's life. You're the basically thing is, guys, about somebody else. That the, most, the more you focus on others, the least you got to, you know, it's like the least of yourself. Let's actually use the weapon not only to edify the church, but edify ourselves. Amen. Amen. Trust me, I haven't been in church for that long. I know that, you know, the more you've been in church, the more you get involved in, 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 um, in nonsense. Amen. But in the name of Jesus, I know that's going to be cut through today in your life. You will go to church because you know that's a place to give more to God. That's right. We're not there to receive and take away. We're there to give. Build upon the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come through those doors rejoicing, you know, singing praises and, and hymns to him. Amen. Amen. Um, so the weapon inside of you. You know, you're supposed to use that weapon, you know, so you can bless others. Amen. Because when you use it to bless others, it's a weapon against who? Against the enemy. The enemy doesn't like for you to help somebody else. The, the enemy doesn't want you to be nice to somebody else. He wants you to be mean to that person. He wants you to curse that person out. The enemy wants you to be far away from God. And, and don't want the, the enemy doesn't want you to bless your enemies or pray for your enemies. That's why God said do it. So whenever you use your talent, that weapon, that gift, to give to others and to provide for the church and others, that's a weapon against the enemy. That's why I said the weapon inside of you. Every time you do something good, that's a weapon against the enemy. That's saying, you know, I believe in God and I will do good. So you smack in the enemy every time you do something good. Every time you pick up your, 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 your napkins when you go to McDonald's or KFC, you drop it on the floor, you know you dropped it. And you leave it there, that's littering. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, you know, it's not illegal. Well, it is illegal, you get a ticket, but what I'm saying is, you know, People of God are supposed to be in order, represent the kingdom. You're supposed to represent God. So every time, for example, you go pick up that that that, that napkin that you drop instead of leaving it there, you represent the kingdom. You're saying, you know what, devil, I'm a man of order because I'm with God and God is a man yeah. of order. You're representing the kingdom. you slapping him in the face. As little as that, but it still works. You know, how you tell him you're a woman of God when you're... you're